In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a super cool but hidden feature that is going to really make working with instances and collection instances and linked objects so easy. And it's going to give you flexibility. I, I just love this feature. I've got two chairs here that are the same piece of geometry, and I am going to be having duplicates of them in the scene, but I'm probably going to need to make changes to, say, the materials, and I'll need to be able to select an object to gain access to a material. That's sort of one of the primary goals here. The first thing that we're going to look at is the fact that I have these data components organized in two different ways. So these are separate pieces of data sets at this point. I have one set that's organized by parenting under an empty. That's a great way because it gives you a lot of flexibility of control over gaining access to the individual components. I can select individual components and that gives me quick access to being able to edit the material. But it can also introduce its own challenges. So let's come over here. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to do a select hierarchy and then I'm going to press option D which is the same as coming up under the object menu and invoking duplicate linked. And then I can move that. But in this case, I'm going to press the escape key and I will just move that using our little widget right there so that I can move it in a very predictable way. And each of these individual components is an instance of the original. And so they're basically linked together. And we can see down here, there's that linked duplicate. Easy, easy. And I can make as many of those as I want. I can select this one and edit the material, or I can select that component and edit the material here, and they will both reflect the same change. The challenge of this method, though, is that if I need to add an object to this collection of objects, it won't propagate through the scene. So, for instance, if I came over here and I pressed Shift S and I moved the cursor to that location, and then I press Shift A, and I came up and added a sphere, and then I moved this sphere, I'm going to hold the Shift key inside of the original chair group, it doesn't propagate to the other objects. Okay, and this is a problem because you may need that to happen. That's a very common need to occur when you're updating an instance of an object that has a lot of components to it. So that's a particular challenge with this method using an empty. Now, the other thing, so I'm going to delete that right there. So the other way of doing this is to use a collection. Collections is a great way of organizing your scene into logical hierarchies but it will introduce its own challenges. First off, I'm going to press Shift S and I'm going to relocate the cursor to the world origin. The object was modeled at the very center of the world origin because it's got symmetry. Now that we're done with that, let's come over and invoke instance to scene. And there we go. It's created an instance and I can move that very easily, just like I did the first method. And I can put that over here. And in fact, let's do this. I'm going to press option D, which is duplicate linked, escape key, so it's not freeform moved. And I'll just move that off to the side. These can be rotated independently. And the benefit of this method is that I can do the exact same thing that I did to the first chair. I can press Shift S. I'm going to do a cursor to selected, Shift A, and then I can add a sphere. Let me scale that down a little bit, move it up. And then I'm going to take that and move it into the chair collection, and it propagates. So that's the benefit of this mechanism. But this mechanism will then introduce its own challenges. So frequently when I'm using this method, the original collection of data that I'm working with is not in a position that I want it to be. And I, I, I usually want it to maintain its position. I want it to be here in the center of the scene where it was originally modeled. And I want the instances to be placed around the scene. So then you just come up here and you press the little checkbox and you turn that off. And you're now just working with your instances of the collection to propagate into the scene and pose that way. That's great. That's fantastic. But now we run into another problem. If I need to change the material for the chair, let's say I'm wanting to make a change to the wood texture. I have to come back to the main collection here, re-enable it, and then select 
the component I want to edit, and then I can edit the material. You have to edit a material with a selected object. And I think that's kind of a weakness with the way Blender does materials. So this can become cumbersome in a much more complex scene. For instance, in this much more complex kitchen scene, I've got the bar stools. And these bar stools are simply instances of the main collection that they're linked to. And that collection is in the scene, but it's turned off. That original source data is exactly where it was modeled at the zero point of the scene. So I can turn that on to gain access to it in order to change the material. But yeah, it's just, it's cumbersome. I've got lots of other objects around it and I've got to come back over here to make any editing changes. And then I've got to come back over here and turn it off and turn it on. You know, you're jumping around the scene and you're trying to locate things in a hierarchy. And that's a weakness because Blender doesn't give you the ability to select individual components. But I could update the components. I could add a component, for instance. So that's the benefit of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a totally hidden feature that's not enabled by default that's going to allow you to do this. Back in our chair file, let's remove all of these instances and duplicates. X key, and I'm going to hide that. You never know, we may come back to it. And I'm going to turn off the chair collection. I'm going to reset the cursor back to the world origin because we're about to link a file here and it always uses that as reference. So I'm going to press Shift S, cursor to world origin. And then we're going to take a look at our file directory. So I've got this big messy file directory of iterations of my file. And I've got one directory called linked parts that I've created. And with inside of that, I've created a series of Blender files that have some of the components that I'm using inside of my kitchen scene. So one of them is called main chair. And inside of that, I have the main chair and I've got a bar stool variation of that. And those are each inside of a collection. So I've organized these in such a way that I can gain access externally to the two collections for those two objects. So we're going to come over to the link menu and we're going to come to the linked parts directory, access the main chair file, link it, and it's going to open that file up and show us sub components. We want to access to the collection main chair. And when we link that, it will bring that file in. So here's the cool part about this. This is going to look like a collection instance, but it's independently linked to that external file. And I could press Shift D and create duplicates of that. And in fact, I could take this and I could move that into the scene and pose it, etc. Now, here's sort of the heart of this tutorial. We need to make a change to the chair. Let's say the material on here, we want to make a change. We don't have access to that. So again, that's the big benefit of using an empty to put objects inside of is that you can easily gain access to those components. Well, turns out if we come over to our preferences, let's come to add-ons and do a search for linked. And there is an edit linked library add-on that's turned off. I don't know why it's turned off by default. Go ahead and enable that. And then when you press the N key, go to item, you're going to notice there's a new entry down here called edit linked library. And all you have to do is press edit linked library and it will pull up the scene. And now you can edit it and it's brilliant. I can come in, make changes to my chair wood or any of the materials I can edit the polygon mesh, I can do whatever I want to it. The reference is to the zero point in the scene. And that's the critical thing to understand is when it references this collection and brings it into a new scene, it uses the world's origin in this file as its reference for the pivot of the instance in the new scene. Okay, so we've made our change. And now all you have to do is press return to original file, and it's updated. It's fantastic. So we could do the same thing from the same file. If I came over and did a link, I could import bar stool. And now I have my bar stool 
linked to this file. So this is a very simple setup. But again, the benefit is that we can just do an edit linked here and turn on this collection, make changes to that. It doesn't matter if these are turned on or not. Okay, make changes to it, come back to item, and then just, you know, return to the original file. And there we go. So let's take a look at that in, in context of our more complex scene. Back in our main scene, I'm using the standard collection instance with a collection that's part of the scene. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the X key and I'm going to delete those. They don't, I can't select it. I can't gain access to the materials. There, there's no way of, that I know of, there's no way that I know of, of selecting this and having it find the original collection that it's associated with. It's kind of a workflow weakness in my mind. So I'm going to turn on bar stool. It's there at the world origin. So I'm actually just going to come over and lock stock and barrel delete that. So we're going to do a delete hierarchy, press shift S to make sure that the cursor, we're going to go, just go back to the world origin for right now. And we'll come over here. I want to make sure it goes into the main scene component collection. That's my target collection link. And there it is. So remember, again, we're accessing an external blender file main chair that has two collections in it. Come to collection bar stool link. There we go. Now I can just pose it in the scene. So I'll come to the top, remove perspective, and I can move that over here. So now these are externally linked to the bar stool. And as soon as I need to make a change, I just click that and it takes me right back to this file. And I can make all of my changes in there without all the clutter of the main scene in place. Now, the reason why I put these two files together, the, the main chair and the bar stool, is because they share a material. They share a material, and that's really useful. And what we're going to look at next is a way where you can actually customize and add separate materials to these externally linked objects. Now let's have some fun, and let's take this one step further. Let's say that we have these two chairs and we would like one of these two chairs to have a different material, but we'd still like them to link back to that master file so that we only have one piece of data to work with. And in fact, we can do that. I will select this instance of the collection, our linked collection, and I'm going to come up to object and we're going to come down to relations and we're going to invoke make library override. And you're going to see that that changes state. And we now suddenly have access to the components inside of there. Well, we have a problem. If we, when we do that, it resets the object back to its original import location. So I'm going to undo that. I wanted to show that to you because let's say you've got something in a position and you want to make that library override. I'm going to press shift S and I'm going to do cursor to selected. So that's right there. And then we would go back over and do the relations make library override. And when I set this up, I knew that it was going to do that. So back in the original file, I set it up so that I'm using sort of a hybrid of these two methods, one of using an empty and one of using a collection where I've put all of the components inside of an empty and that empty sits inside of the collection. And now all I have to do is select this empty, press shift S and I can do selection to cursor and it'll move it back into that location. I don't know why it does that, but that's what it does. So the cool thing is now I can come over and I can select these individual components. Well, this is fantastic because that gives me access to the materials. By default, it's not going to allow us to change it. The gray out means it's still linking back to the materials in that original file. Well, I can come over here and you can see where it says nine. That means this material is linked to nine objects, but I want this to become a new 
separate material that can function just for this. So I'm going to press the 9 and it's going to put a 0, 0, 1 there. And I'm going to rename this so it's wood lighter. In fact, let's come over to our shading tab, zoom in, and I have access to the material setup for this. In this one, I'm going to take the bitmap and I'm going to drive it right into the base color because I want it to be lighter. And in fact, we can do the same thing for this component. I'll come over here, click the eight to make it its own separate object. And now I will just link to the wood lighter that we just made and it will put it there. Now, importantly, there are two things to take away from this. You're going to note selecting these individual these individual components, I still have access to this edit override library button and I can click that and it will still give me access back to the original object. Well, that's fantastic because if I need to make a modeling change to this, I can totally come in and make a modeling change. I can do anything I want to this. So for instance, if I press the tab key, we're just going to come over here and we're going to move that up. It's a quick, easy mod. Press the tab key return to original file and note it has applied give it a second to update the materials it's applied that editing change to both the original and the overridden version it's it's really neat i'm going to do a separate tutorial where i show you how i use this in the kitchen scene in an even more sophisticated way but for now i just wanted to show you this override mechanism is really fantastic but it's this edit length library that is hidden. They don't have it turned on by default and you would never know it's there unless somebody told you about it. It is so useful.